this is the basic uh, kit needed that I'm using today to extract the valve guides from the block. So uh, 5 16th length bolt, 5 16th bolt, uh, grade 8. I did try a grade 5 and sheared the end of it. So this is a grade 8 bolt uh, with a coupler used for a threader bar, a normal threader bar. A half inch uh, socket to uh, drive the um, bolt through the threader bar nut. Um, I'm spreading the load on the block with um, some bearing seal and uh, bushing install kit uh, spacers. Well, I'm using them as spacers anyway, and a heavy duty washer. So I've got one installed on the block here at the moment. And I've just started this one. Um, you can see the spacer uh, the, from the bushing kit to spread the load on top of the block. A large washer, also a nut uh, under there, and a couple of washers to uh, cut down on the friction. Just as a, an addendum, I did try a uh, grade 5 bolt initially uh, on valve number 1 when I first started this. And uh, that was the end result. So, what I've learned from this is some of these are going to be tough to get out, and you definitely need to go for a, a grade 8 5 16 bolt. And this bolt's um, 6 inches long, by the way. That 5 16 bolt fits straight through the valve guide, and then down at the bottom, there's a half inch spanner or wrench depending on which part of the world you come from and you can just see the bottom of the valve guide with the threader bar nut up tight up against it i've just started this one but i've stopped in the process just to do a bit of video i do have a problem with the valve guide at the very end of the block which is uh the exhaust valve i've tried that a couple of times using this method and it just does not want to budge so letting that soak a bit more in um uh, releasing agent and hopefully it'll come free otherwise we might need to put some heat on it so because I had trouble with that exhaust valve I then went and extracted an inlet inlet valve guide uh, and that came out okay and then I went I skipped the next inlet valve guide and went straight for an exhaust valve guide and that started using this method So now it's a matter of cranking up on the ratchet, holding the spanner underneath in place, and pulling up on, on the valve guide. You could have a couple of runs at this because the thread will bottom out on the 5 16th nut uh, bolt. And that's it just bottoming out now so I'll just back it off a little bit back the nut off at the bottom Put another couple of spaces underneath. That's it just bottoming out now, so I'll back it off again. Now 
Add a couple more spacers. That's it, just bottomed out again. And that's it that's the valve guide out so you can see the setup and this uh, nut pulls up through the through the block with no problem at all so I back this one off a bit and I don't know go at it put some more lubricant on the washers and it, it cracked and now it's coming out, it's easing out now. Quite a bit of tension on it though, it's touch and go I think whether the cheap bolt, cheap nut underneath would uh, keep its thread intact. And a couple more spaces underneath. Take the slack out underneath of the nut. Attempt. We shouldn't need to go too far before the valve guide releases itself. Feel it getting easier now. Two more spacers. I think we're almost there. That's it, that's released now. And that's the next one out. Okay, going for number five now. One, two, three, four, five. So we have three out. We have number one is stuck at the moment, that's still soaking in releasing agent. And we'll see how this one goes. And that's it just that's it just released itself that's the kind of crack you get when it breaks from its hold and now i'm just gradually drawing it up through the block so. Three, four, 
that's number five out. You can see the corrosion around the top of the uh, valve guide, it's quite a lot of it actually. The major surface has pitted quite a bit. Well, I finally got all the rest out, and this one had another go at let it soak in the releasing agent and penetrant, and uh, it cracked a little moment ago. So it's on its way. So that'll be all the valves, the light valve guides extracted. This one has been tensioned up about three times in total. It's just released itself. So that is valve guide number eight removed. Quite a bit of corrosion on that one as well. Don't know if you can see it or not, but these are the valve guides that were extracted, and they're extremely worn. And also this one in particular. Uh, is showing a lot of corrosion and it's on it's even split near the top there I think this is one of the uh, guides that was in one of the exhaust valves and uh, they're, they're extremely worn so here's a typical valve this was number seven and I don't know if I can demonstrate it to you but you can hear the play if I wriggle it And they're all pretty much like that. So all eight were replaced. Well, that's the new uh, valve guides installed. Uh, valve guides all came from Fordson House. I got the valve guide ins installation tool from uh, cylinderheadsupply.com. Uh, tool is HD312A, and then use the three pound hammer to tap them in. As you're tapping them in, they just gradually keep creeping down with each tap, and then eventually you'll f you, you get almost like a ring of resistance as the uh, collar on the valve guide bottoms out in the block. And it's pretty obvious as well. You, 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 there's no doubt that you've seated the valve correctly and it's fully down. To drive the new valve guides in, I used a handheld valve driver, which you can see in the video now. Um, it came from Woodward Equipment Company, which was through Cylinder Head Supply, Cylinder Heads Supplies, SupplyT.com. But just Google Woodward Equipment Company. The item number is HD-312-A um, and the guide ID on it is decimal 312 inches or 7.92 millimetres and the driver OD is uh, 0.487 inches or 12.4 millimetres. And that's the actual driver itself. To remount the new valve guides, um, I'm using a K-Line decimal 313 inch uh, valve guide reamer. Part number for K-Line is KL1176. So uh, that's the website address there that you can see in the, in the image. 
The reason you've got to use a reamer afterwards is because once the valve guides have been hammered into position, um, they distort slightly, they compress a little bit, and uh, you need to remount the guide so that uh, the valves themselves will move freely within them. So a three, decimal 313 inch valve guide reamer. Just want to add that this is a spiral uh, valve guide reamer and it is specifically for cast iron valve guides. Uh, so it should be used dry without any cutting oil or anything like that.